This tutorial will share how to create a video like this Mayhem in the City. Keep watching and I'll show you how. This is Randy with some Create Studio Pro tips. There is a lot going on to make this video, but each piece is really quite easy to do, so let's break it down. 1. There is beep, bolt, and geary going up and down. 2. A hole in the street appears. 3. Our three characters fall into that hole. And 4. The mascot does a wily e. coyote impersonation of running in the air before falling. Let's get started. I will start with the hole in the street as that will determine where to place the Beat, Bolt, and Geary characters. The hole is extremely easy to make in Create Studio Pro. Open the studio and with all selected, type hole into the search box. That provides a variety of holes for men. We can make the preview window larger by using the mouse to resize it. When you hover your mouse over a video, it will show you what it will look like. For my video, I will use Ground Break 10, so drag it onto the canvas. Notice that it is a video, and when I play the video, you can see the hole is black, the background is white, and the fragments are various shades of gray. Okay, let's drop the city street background onto the canvas and move that background below the whole video. Have the background fill the canvas by clicking on this icon. And resize and reposition the hole so that it is in the street where you want it. I want the video to be longer, so I grabbed the end of the street background with a mouse click and dragged it to the right. I will do the same with the hole, but since the hole is a video and not a picture, I cannot extend it. The solution is to take a snapshot near the end of the video. Right mouse click on the video and select Take Snapshot. This will create a picture of the track where your playhead was and put it in to My Files. Grab the picture and drag it onto the canvas. The picture has the default size and location, so we will have to resize and move it. Now, you could do that manually by using your mouse, but here is a tip. Click on the video and make a note of the X and Y position and the scale. In this case, position X equals minus 71, position Y equals 270, and scale equals 50. Now, click on the picture you just dragged onto the canvas and set the position and scale to the values you recorded. The picture drops right into place. Drag the picture to the end of the video and move the playhead to the start. All right, see that gray spot? I don't want that in my project, so I could use a different ground break video, but here's a tip on how to use this particular ground break. Since the street is a dark color, I can fix this by using the blend mode. Click on the video track and on the far right, click on blend mode. As I move my mouse over different options, you can see the effect applied to the video. In this case, we want to use the darken mode. In darken mode, the darker pixel in either the background or video will be displayed in the final outcome. So where the video has black, that will be displayed, but where it has light gray, the street background will be displayed. Okay, let's bring in our three characters. Drag Bolt onto the canvas and change Action to Dancing. Resize and position into place above the hole to the left. Next, drag in Beep and change Action to Spin Around. Resize and position into place above the hole to the right. 
extend the spin around action by dragging the end marker to the right, then select both character tracks and move them to the start of the video. Now drag in Geary and since it does not dance or spin around, pick one of the other actions and here I chose Builder. I want Geary to start in his Builder pose and to do that, click on the action name on the track, it is that blue box, and do a right mouse click. And finally, click on Disable Starting Animation. Move Geary to the start of the video and extend his action. For each character, add the poking out his tongue action. Select a track and in the top right, click on plus add new and then add the action. Repeat that for the other two characters. Now, I don't want the ground to break until the characters had a few seconds to jump up and down. So I will go down to the video track and slide it to the right. Okay, let's play that from the beginning. That looks like the timing is about right. We can always adjust later if needed. Now it is time to give them the jumping animation and to do that we will use the group batch animation. Let's look at a fresh example to see how the batch animation works. If I select all tracks and right mouse click, I can group them. Once they are grouped, notice there is a new panel on the far right. And to the right of the Open Group button, there is a lightning bolt icon. When you click on the lightning bolt, a batch animation panel will open. This will allow random adjustments to the group for opacity, sideways motion, up and down motion, rotations, and size. By setting top to 10%, you will notice the speed and randomness will be displayed with defaults of 80 and 50 percent. Now let's play that and see what happens. You see the characters move up and down at random times. Tip! Batch animation is very useful at giving objects micro motions without having to create those animations manually. I use batch animation to give this sailboat a bobbling motion in another project. It is very cool. While we are here, there is one thing you should be aware of. If you scrub the video by moving the playhead yourself manually, you will not see the batch animations. The reason is the random values are generated when playing or publishing the video. It is not generated by moving the playhead manually. Now, using Batch animations is convenient, but I want the characters to have different speeds from each other. So I will click on the track and select Ungroup. If I select one of the character's track, the batch animation is not available. That is because batch animation requires a group. But here is a huge tip. You can group a single track. And then once you do that, the batch animation feature is available. Now that we know how to apply batch animations individually to our characters, let's go back to the Mayhem video. I want the batch animation to stop before the characters stick out their tongue. So I will select all three tracks and cut them using the scissor icon. Then select the bolt track and with command G turn it into a group. Click on the lightning bolt and set top to 6% and change the speed to 95% to make the jumps really fast. Next, select beep, group the track, and set top to 5% and change speed to 95%. Finally, select Geary, group the track and set top to 4% and leave the speed at 80% which will make him jump slower than the other two characters. Now. Each character has their own individual micro movements. And with that set, it is time to move on to the next operation, which is to make the characters fall through the hole. Let's start with Bolt. 
Move the playhead to after he starts poking out his tongue and click on Add Animation, which you will find above the timeline. Select Position and you will see two diamonds have been added to the clip. We want Bolt's jump to be pretty fast, so mouse click on the second diamond and drag it closer to the first diamond. With your playhead on the second diamond, raise the character into the air. I did this by holding the shift and up arrow key on the keyboard. After Bolt is positioned, move the playhead three frames forward by clicking on the double triangle icon above the timeline. Then add another position animation. This time, click on the second diamond and move Bolt down below the canvas. Do the same operation for Beep. So, did you notice that when Bolt and Beep fell, they were in front of the street? That needs to be fixed, and to do that, we will be masking. To mask, a shape needs to be added. Since the hole has jagged edges, we will need to custom build the shape, and it really is pretty easy. At the very top, click on Pin, and start adding points around the jagged bottom of the hole with your mouse. The edges don't have to be precise as the animation is so fast no one will really notice. What they will notice is a straight or smooth edge, so just give the edge various angles. When you reach the other side of the hole, then set a pinpoint off the canvas to the right. Then add another pinpoint off the bottom of the canvas to the left and then click on Connect Shape. That will fill in the canvas with a blue shape. I don't want to mask over Geary yet, so raise the Geary track above the path and move the path to the left on the timeline. Then go to the bottom and duplicate the background track. Move the duplicated background to below the path track. Make sure it is above the bolt and beep tracks. Size the background track so that it starts just before the position animations. Select this background and the path track, right mouse click, and select mask image with path. Now when I scrub the playhead, you can see the characters are behind the street and it looks convincing that they are following into the hole. Let's play this so that you can see a mistake that I just made. See that blue line? We need to fix that. Unmask the clip and click on the path clip. See the border width value of 3 in the top right? That needs to be a 0. Go back and mask the image with the path again. This time, when we play it, the blue line is not present. I will fast forward here as I do the Geary character. The only thing I will change is to do both scale and position animation so that it looks like he is jumping back over the hole by reducing Geary's size as he jumps up. Again, Geary falls in front of the street, so duplicate the mask we created earlier and place that above the Geary character falling into the hole. Now it is time to add the mascot falling into the hole. Move the playhead after the time the characters have fallen through, drag the mascot character onto the canvas and give him the running away action. I suspect I will need the running action longer so I will extend the clip. Now Resize and position the mascot over the hole. Click on Add Animation and select Position. And change Easing to Linear, which makes the running speed constant. With the playhead at the first diamond, move mascot off the canvas to the left. Again, using the Shift arrow key. 
When I play that, the running seems too fast, so I will change the duration by moving the second diamond further to the right. Give the character some time to run in the air, and then add another position animation. And this time, make the easing smooth. Click on this second diamond and move the mascot below the canvas. To give the mascot even more time spinning in the air, I'm going to move the animation to the right by mouse clicking on it and dragging it. Now, to fix the part where the mascot is seen on the street, duplicate the mask we created earlier and put it above the mascot clip as he falls through the hole. There you go. That is how to create mayhem on a city street and create a hole for characters to fall through. Hey everyone, have a good day and happy creating.